it's great to talk to you, mm. Nadia. So we can mm. catch up on the admissions now for 2024 intake because I think now that lots of students are applying to Chinese universities, yeah. Um, yeah, what would you say is different this year compared to last year or before? What do you see is changing at the moment? I think the main difference is that now COVID is not around anymore. And in the past uh, three years back from 2020 until 2023, it was the year of COVID pretty much. So I would say uh, at that time, the demand for studying in China kind of declined. I think that was also because of COVID and then China was closing the border for quite some time. So students weren't able to study uh, on campus, not until last year in 2023. So I think that makes a huge uh, difference compared to right now where COVID is no longer around. Technically, it's, it is still around, but it's not a pandemic anymore. And then China has opened the border last year, so students can come to China and study on campus. So it creates more and more uh, interest from international students to come to China from 2024. We can see that students are getting excited as of uh, last 2023, especially after they heard that China is officially open. I think more and more of them are getting excited. They want to come to China. They want to experience China. Yeah, I think it's gradually impre- increasing, right? Because I think mm-hmm. last year, because it was open basically all of last year, but still last year was not quite as, it was about, I would say it was about 50% of 2019 yeah. or maybe a little bit less than that. And then because it was kind of announced in the middle of the application process, but I think now that it's like a new wave of students coming to China. So it's, it's exciting. It's great that yeah. students can come now. So it's, it's like a that's really true. new era, isn't it? That's true. That's true. I think last year they, they were a bit cautious as well because China was like closing the border for some time. So students might have, like backup choices, they might go somewhere else. But right now, I think they're very uh, into China. They're willing to go and, you know, like do everything for them to get the admissions to the top Chinese universities. Yeah. And some of the students are asking, what are the current students, international students in China like? Like a lot of Western students are asking, are there many Western students in China? Um, And how is it? How has it changed now? We had some students asking that. How, what do you see about, how do you see that, the kind of students applying to China now? I think it's a mix, Rich. And I'm actually quite surprised. I mean, based on uh, the applications that we found on China admissions, there are some, uh, like there are more students coming from South America and also Europe that are applying for degree programs. Yeah. And these are not the kind of... Uh, and these are not the kind of profile that apply like maybe five years before in 2019. Because in 2019, I think most students come from Southeast Asia or from South Korea. I think more and more of these type of students, they come to China for pursuing their degree programs. But I think right now it's more diverse in terms of the uh, background. Yeah. Yeah, I think before there used to be quite a lot of students who'd come from for one semester from right. Europe and America. But now they're becoming much more likely to come for degree program, aren't they? Yeah. So that's yeah. quite a big change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so right now we have, yeah. So what would you say? Because I think uh, we're now, as we have like a growing number of students applying on the platform and coming to China, uh, what would you say we can? Ex- if a student asks, what can they expect after they apply? What What's the expectation after they have submitted an application? Well, after they've paid the application fee and submitted their applications on China admissions, uh, the next step that they can expect is for our team from China admissions to check their documents. That's what we do. So we will review all incoming applications and then we will check your information. We will check your documents to make sure that uh, you have submitted all the correct information and documents. Because sometimes uh, the documents that they submitted are not in a correct format. And why is this important? Because university, they want they want you to submit all completed applications, right? So you can't submit your documents late. And then also they would likely consider your application more if your application are in a good format and it's in a correct format. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's why uh, it's important and that's why we are here to basically review your applications and then if all is good, then uh, you can create an account on the university website and that is related to the visa application because nowadays the visa uh, is not given on a paper format anymore. It's all online. So when you're accepted to the program, you will be uh, sent a link to your personal email address containing the link to download the visa form for your for your future visa application. Yeah, that's why we ask students to create their own account. And then after that, we will submit your application and basically following up until you get your results from the university. Yeah, can you introduce more about the visa process? So they will get the digital visa mm -hmm. and how, how does that work? Yeah, so it's changing uh, last year in 2023. It was still a bit uh, mixed kind of like last year. So some university was still using the old system and some was like implementing the new system already. But for this year, every, every university in China, they will use this new system. So when you are accepted to the university in China, uh, they will send you the pre-admissions notice. They might ask you to pay some deposit fee, uh, let's say 1000 RMB or, uh, or like the full amount of the tuition fee, for example, to confirm your seat, to basically uh, declare that I'm taking, I'm accepting the admissions offer from the university. Yeah, and after that, the university, they will prepare the admissions notice and also the visa form and then they will send this uh, documents to you. The visa form are all online, so they don't send uh, hard copies of visa form anymore, unlike before. So you can just download it from the website. It's called studyinchina.edu.cn. I think uh, if possible, we can put the link uh, in the video. So you can download it from there. You can verify whether it's authentic or not. And then you can use this. You can just print it out and then use it for the visa application. It's the same with the admissions notice. Uh, most universities nowadays, they send this by uh, digital format because uh, a lot of Chinese universities, sorry, a lot of Chinese embassies around the world, they do accept the digital format. But if the embassy asks for the paper format for your admissions notice, then she can just uh, tell the university and they will send you the paper admissions notice. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's quite um easy to understand they just take that and then go to the embassy it's the same process as before basically yeah and i think it's it's more uh it's easier for students and then it's like it's preventing uh some scams i think there were some scams going on before so with this digital format it's almost impossible uh for it to be you know for fate or whatever because there is like a qr code on each of the visa forms yeah yeah and I think the Chinese, how the Chinese visa works, it's much more, it's quite different to other countries like Europe and Canada, right? In in <laughs> some way, it's, it seems very efficient when you're it booking is. an appointment. Yeah, it is. we definitely, <laughs> yeah, because I think we've had experience of it because I think students, sometimes they think it's like very, they have many concerns like about getting the visa. Uh, I think in some countries they may ask for more documents, like they may ask for bank statements and things like that. I think in Pakistan they may ask for more details yeah. to show that students can afford the expenses and things like that in certain countries. But usually it's like it's when you're it maybe like takes a little bit of time to get the appointment, but then when you get the appointment, it, you can get the result in about a week or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of universal, like everywhere around the world. Uh, I think the regular application process for visa will take you only about four working days. Yeah, that yeah. that how long it is uh, to get the Chinese visa in Indonesia, but also in several countries in Asia. But I believe it's the same standard in other countries as well. Yeah, I, I do think they are very efficient compared to like uh, a lot of the Western countries where it can take you months to get your visa done. So Chinese uh, embassies are very efficient in processing the documents. You just need to fill out the online visa application on the Chinese embassy website or the Chinese visa center and then bring the admissions notice and visa form with you. They will also ask for your passport, your photo as well. Like you said, some embassies might ask for additional documents like bank statement or they might double check with the university uh, regarding your admissions. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm always impressed by the staff there. They're very efficient and easy to communicate and get, 
yeah very professional um for the uh yeah so what do you think about so after they've applied on our platform uh they uh they will need to create an account on the university platforms they're applying to can you introduce that a bit more and and why that happens Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, for us to submit your application to the universities, we will need to submit them through the university application portal. And each university in China, they have an application portal where uh, that's how they receive the applications from students anyway. And then the reason why we nowadays we ask students to create their own account is that number one, so that you can get direct updates from the university. This is so uh, this is to prevent any delays coming from, you know, Uh, relaying one message to another from the university to us to you i think we want to cut off this barrier and then we want you to get updates directly from the university because that will be more efficient for you and then secondly uh like i mentioned before it's related to the visa as well because once you are accepted to the program all the updates as including the admissions notice and the visa form they will be sent to your personal email address so that means uh, this is the email address you use to register in the system so that you can download directly uh, from the website using the email address that you use to register. Yeah. Yeah. And it's much better for students because they will have that same account the whole time they're studying in the university. And so they will get updates, they will get reminders and everything like that. So it's much better to for them to get that directly and we also um yeah it's better for them to get to get that update directly right and to for that to be on the system it just makes the whole process much more efficient and yeah um and what do you think about um yeah maybe we could talk about what do you think are some differences or or like differences between uh in china that students should know about uh, because I think we were talking the other day about how some students from certain countries, um, they kind of get a bit confused in the application process. And what, what would you say is the uh, main differences or any things they should know about it? I think when it comes to dealing with uh, processes or people from other countries, it's always important to keep an open mind. Because you're not supposed to think or feel like, you know, the way it is processed in other countries is going to be the same like your country, right? It might be better processed, it might be worse, like, or it might be the same even. So you should keep an open mind so that you don't have uh, the same expectations. Or if let's say they don't process it the way it is processed in your countries, then some people might think, oh, it means that they are doing like a bad job or whatever, but it's just their culture. So that's why I think it's very important to understand that uh, in the first place when you are applying to uh, universities outside of your home country. And then I think the main difference lies in the uh, timeline for application and then also maybe the requirements uh, to apply as well. So in terms of the requirements, some Chinese universities, they have age limitation, which is not very common in other countries. And then I think this might be also related to the visa as well. Like if you're under 18, then you're not like legally, you're not adult yet. That's why you need to have a guardian, for example. Yeah, And they have a certain uh, age limitation depending on the programs that you apply for. And then also another thing is in terms of the timeline for application. Like I know some uh, like universities in the Western countries, they tend to be more detail in like giving the timeline for the applications right or if let's say you're applying between this time and this time you'll get your result between this time and this time and that's not really the case in china so in china they have like a very uh i would say let's say uh the application that like at the application period is from the first of january until march so that's all yeah and then you have to you know, you, you basically just have to wait until they finish the whole process and they will let you know the updates by email. Yeah. And then the process, it might take about four to six weeks. Sometimes it takes longer if they have holidays or if it's if it is a peak uh, time. So, yeah, I think for, for these type of cases, just be mindful because it's it may not be the same as how it is processed in your country. 
but yeah that's that's part of it that's something that you're going to learn right like embracing other cultures yeah yeah i think uh, it's definitely something that because i came to study in what is the top university in china and i was expecting it to be sim- more similar to uk and how that's mm-hmm. how that works uh, and so i was um i i would describe the difference as china is kind of more fluid and uh it's more kind of flexible uh with and it's more kind of um maybe they're less likely to have a position uh it's more like kind of um yeah flexible position but i'd say in in the uk it's like for, an example would be just the curriculum for every program in every university in the uk is just like clearly written on the website in every yeah, university yeah. in england uh but in china there's not this information it's not available would need we would need to ask each of the head of departments to prepare it and i think the reason is because they don't actually centrally manage it they just each of the professors manages it themselves so there's not a way to get it i think another thing that's also quite different is that i i was just really um surprised because it seems like the semester dates mm. they don't they don't share the semester dates until maybe <laughs> Yeah. the start of the semester <laughs> yeah so you don't really know when the semester dates are right it's like things like that that are kind of it's it, this is like a very big difference in uk or the west and china and i think mm-hmm. it's actually just an asian thing because i think mm-hmm. if you look at many countries in asia i think i i'd like to know if i think maybe indonesia may be more like that it's um yeah it's more flexible or fluid and So this can be a bit frustrating for students for, from the West who want to want to have everything in a certain way and they want it to be very ordered. Would you do you think that's right? What would you, what do you think say about that? I think that's <laughs> right, Rich. I mean, Indonesia is more chaotic in my opinion in terms of time. Like we don't really value time. Like people they they're late every time. So uh, maybe with you know with uh, with what happened in China, like sometimes they, they announce they have some extra seminars or whatever, like two days before. I think like for me, I get used to it because that's how it is in Indonesia. It's kind of similar as well. So it's not like a huge deal for me. So uh, that's fine. But I think uh, what really shocked me when I studied there was the, the dress code at university, because in Indonesia, we were taught to dress very polite as in you cannot come on campus with shorts no that's like the security will definitely told you to to like to go home and change yeah but in china like uh you can come with anything pretty much right i come to classes with shorts and t-shirt and that's fine as long as you're there to really listen to the lectures and everything uh that's funny it doesn't matter what kind of outfit that you were wearing but in indonesia it's the complete contrast like you have to You have to be very, uh, th- very neat when coming mm. to the university. Like, I think at that time, in some cases, especially when you were uh, taking the exams, in my university in Indonesia, you weren't allowed to wear T-shirts. Like, you have to wear something with color, like shirts or polo shirt. That's fine. Yeah. Otherwise, if the dress code doesn't match, you have to go home. You can't even attend the exams. Mm. Yeah, so these type of things, it's really different. Uh, for yeah. me, but yeah, I mean, it's something to learn, right? It's it's good experience. Yeah, I think that's a, another big difference, isn't it? Because I think in England, everyone cares a lot about clothes and fashion. Mm. Um, and I think in China, people are more, they kind of want to be more humble or they want to not be too flashy. And so they just kind of, try, they're much more casual, I think. But I don't know if this is a trend in the whole world because I think it's probably changing a bit uh, because I think that less people are wearing suits because we're now we have work more work from home we have more mm. digital economy so I think right you, people don't really sit at home wearing suits uh, they, if in a more tech environment so maybe this is a general trend that's happening or it's also part of the Chinese Chinese culture as well as to be a bit more not kind of not care to, not worry too much about appearance as much it's more about because i think this is a difference that i've noticed is not so much about 
the appearance it's also it's about your substance and what you're really like mm. I kind of I quite like that in some way because they kind of look deeper into you and they think like okay it doesn't matter what you're really wearing it matters who you are uh, mm. clothes are clothes right and maybe also because in China there's just so much cheap clothes as well like they have so many factories of uh, clothes that it's just so easy to get clothes <laughs> or it's just so easy to get like they just have so much it's like the factory of they make so many things right so everything is so cheap so they don't really they and i think they're kind of more uh, they like to save more they like to don't like to spend so much on that right mm-hmm. um yeah so that's quite interesting i didn't realize there was a difference between indonesia um and then yeah i think one thing that students have is uh there's an issue that some students had which is that they want they apply to a program and then the program doesn't exist or it changes mm. um and that usually happens because uh some universities in china they may have they may have a desire to have lots and lots of programs but then if they don't get enough students for a certain program then yeah. before a certain date then they will cancel it um yeah do you yeah. have anything any comments about that Yeah there is often what happened so they have like a minimum uh quota that they have mm. to hit to open the class but if let's say they don't have enough students then sadly they have to cancel the program last minute so i think it's also uh related to what you said that china is a bit fluid it's a bit more flexible and then yeah. also another thing is they uh they may change the list of programs every year So usually mm. every year they will post like a new uh information about the admissions for that following year. And then uh yeah, for that case sometimes they might have some new programs added, but in some cases they might actually remove some of the programs. Maybe because it's less popular, so they don't offer it anymore to international students or they don't, they have other considerations, but some programs might be removed from from uh the list of programs that they offer. Yeah. And I think that's uh, also something that is a bit different than uh, many of the Western universities. Like in China, you can't apply for, uh, let's say you're you're applying right now. It's gonna be for this year's intake in 2024. You cannot apply yet if it's for like 2025 or 2026. So you can't apply forward. Like you have to follow the strict uh, application period that they set for certain years. Yeah. That includes the the programs and information because if you're planning to apply for next year, there are also cases where the programs that you want to apply may not be offered anymore. So you have to wait for their updates uh, for the upcoming intake. Yeah, and they might also change things in the middle of the application process, right? Mm-hmm. Because right for for example, right now they're focusing more on March intake. There's going to be students enrolling and then there may be some changes in March or April for September. Uh, mm-hmm. Usually for the top universities, like the C9, which is like the Ivy League in China, like Tsinghua, Fudan, Peking, uh, they already finished their application deadline. Is Especially for bachelors, it's already finished, but maybe for some masters, it may be still be ongoing. But they're, le- they're less likely to change. But I think most of the other universities... I think we can expect they may have some changes, right, during the yeah. process. That's true. Which is, which is not easy for students because they apply to it and then the program doesn't go ahead. Exactly. And there are also cases where, uh, you know, the application period is still open, uh, mm. but apparently the program is already full. This is usually what happened with a lot of popular programs like Chinese language or uh, MBBS, for instance. Because they have so many students wanting to join the program, and they have like limited quota every year. So sometimes, uh, if you apply a bit later in the process, even though the application is technically still open, you may not be able to secure a seat anymore because all the seats are, have been taken by the other students. Like the program is basically full already, and they can't accept any more new students. Yeah, so these might also happen. Yeah, so that's unfortunate for students. That's why it's good to choose for for them to choose multiple universities, and so they have backups. And also that it's the advantage of our platform is because we can help them apply to other and suggest other programs, uh, other options for them. But it's always a risk, isn't it, if they leave it later in the process? I think it's the later on they leave, they apply, 
the the higher the risk that there may be change it there may be full, it may be full or it may be more competitive um so yeah so i wanted to also share like about how we're improving the improving our platform as well and how we're uh, because i think our three advantages we have is uh technology we have a very clean easy to use platform and uh, we one of the things we've done is created the chatbot which answers a lot of students' questions. And it's really effective because students, it, I mean, it can answer in a, about 30 seconds or, or 20 seconds, and it can answer in any language. And it is, it is very accurate in a lot of things. Like it's still for important things like visa information, it's definitely not gonna be, because it's, it's still AI technology, it's not gonna be 100% perfect, but it's gonna, it's, it's good for general inquiries, but for more important things, it's it's not it's good to be careful and like don't like we have this warning on it that it's only for general information, but it's usually quite helpful and it can usually point students towards links on our platform, which answers most of students' questions. Uh, the other thing, so we have these three advantages, which is like technology, the content that we create, like such as this, such as the content on our platform and our channel. Um, which I believe we're the best uh, content that students can find about studying in China. And that's, a, that's at least our goal is to be the best content. The other thing is the high quality service. And so these are the three of our advantages. And we have a lot of experience in applying to universities. We've helped many students uh, at many universities and we've visited and we, we have very good relationships with lots of universities. So these are our three advantages. And so we are, yeah, we're developing the chatbot. We're improving our content, making more and more better content. We are also improving our service by uh, giving more updates. We also have a VIP, like a certain email for a v, a VIP students. They can also book a call with us after they apply. So they can book a call anytime. And uh, we're also always listening to students on how we can improve it as well. And, uh, yeah, and then also we are focusing, um, yeah, those are our three, those are our kind of main updates. So, yeah, do you have anything else you want to add or anything you want to share to students? Uh, you know, as a founder of China Admissions, I'm actually wondering because a lot of students, they did ask these questions to us. Yeah. Uh, but why, why do you think students should apply to China Admissions and not, let's say, directly to university or using any other methods? Yeah, so I think the three main reasons is that it's easier to apply through China Admissions. It's uh, we also students will get support so they can get updates. They can sp speak to someone who can help them through the process, navigate and communicate with the universities because I think it's it's very hard to communicate if you're if some students are applying to three, four, five, six, even 15, some some students or more universities, then it's quite a lot of communication and it's not that easy to communicate with universities. So uh, we can definitely help in the communication and, and answering most of the questions for students. And then also increasing the chance of getting accepted as well. So those are the three main advantages um, of using our platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you have any any thoughts about that? Yeah, I think that's, that's true. I mean, you know, when you are applying to universities overseas, it's really easy to get lost in the application process and that you might feel alone. Uh, and it's also quite overwhelming. That's how I felt when I was applying to China before, because I did everything by myself. So I had to do like a lot of research here and there to find the exact information because, you know, sometimes when you cross check the information from uh, source A and source B and source C, it might be all different. And then you get so confused and so alone and you get so, you know, overwhelmed and you may not, and sometimes some people may not even continue the whole process because they find it confusing. So yeah, I wish I found Chan Admissions back then to help me apply because it has, uh, you know, like all the information I needed and it's very clear and easy to use. So I could just apply to multiple universities without, you know, without having the hassle of, visiting like different websites or, you know, going through different processes to find out which is correct and what, what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I also want to add that um, the reason we exist is to help students uh, to get into universities. And the reason we create so much content is to help students because 
it is really important to study in China. Like it's completely changed our lives, right? It's amazing experience. And students don't have to use our platform to apply. They can just use our content. They can use our, our platform for research if they want um, as well. That's why we create we create a lot of content on, on our platform as well. So they can just research it as well. Um, but we also are um, working really hard to make our service as, as best as it can be. And we want to have the best, uh, best service in the whole industry. And so we're continually uh, investing and improving on it and making it as, as good as we can. At the same time, we want to help the whole market as well. We want to help all the students. Uh, who can find the resources. That's why we put all of the scholarship information into a guide. That's why we create these guides that can be helpful for students. So we want to help as many students as we can by giving all this information so they can make the best choice. And uh, also if students want some more support, they want some help, we could, they can use us as well uh, to, to apply. And so we can help those. I think uh, there's so many students who want to apply to China. So um we yeah we are aiming for the most ambitious students and the top students who can uh, who who are looking who can who can value our, our support and who who look for some help uh, and who uh, feel like we can help in one of those areas like helping them giving them help like extra support giving them the helping them with communication for example if they want to save time with the application process uh, they want to check like if they're eligible to get into certain programs uh, these kind of students. Uh, but if students have a lot of time on their hands and they want to do it themselves, uh, then uh, they can also apply by themselves as well. So it's up to students to choose. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's cool, Nadia. So um, yeah, do you have anything else you want to share or anything else? Maybe just some tips for the application. Mm -hmm. uh, just some tips for the application uh, that sometimes is overlooked or sometimes students don't remember. Is that number one is always apply as soon as possible. Please do not wait until the last minute or until three days before the deadline to apply because so many things can happen during those times. For example, you might uh, experience the program is already full, let's say, so that you cannot join the program anymore. And then if you wait until the last minute, other universities might have closed as well already. So there are not many choices left for you. So that's why it's important to apply as soon as possible, as early as possible in the process. Also because Chinese universities, they give admissions on a rolling basis. So if, if you apply faster in the process, then you can get the admissions result faster as well. Mm -hmm. And yep. yeah, don't, don't be afraid of coming to China. You might heard a lot of information in the news, but once you actually arrive there, you will find that not everything shared online is, is correct. And then you will you will learn a lot from your experiences abroad. Uh, I think that's important nowadays because the world is getting more and more international in a way. We are getting more and more connected. So it's important to have some international experiences and have some international friends and communities. Yeah, it's really valuable, isn't it, to study in China and understand China. Mm -hmm. Such an interesting market. All right. Thanks, Nadia. That's great to have the chat. Sure.